how many Palestinian deaths will be enough for the prime minister to find the moral courage to call for a ceasefire? While people all over the world are standing up in support of a ceasefire, there really haven't been a whole lot of political leaders, especially in the West, calling for one. But there's a great speech here that I got to show you from uh, NDP MP Matthew Green in Canada. This party is calling for a ceasefire. I'll get to why after the clip they decided to push for a ceasefire. I think it's a it's an important point to make here. But before I even get to the, the this clip here, and I got some more information coming up as well. I want to uh, show you the difference here between a humanitarian pause and a ceasefire. So as CBC breaks down here, there's a distinction between a humanitarian pause and a ceasefire. The UN defines a humanitarian pause as a temporary cessation of hostilities purely for humanitarian purposes. That is usually for a defined period and specific geographical area where the humanitarian activities are to be carried out. While there is no universally accepted definition, the UN says a ceasefire agreement tends to be more structured and feature detailed provisions on objectives, timelines, security arrangements, and monitoring and verification mechanisms. So part of the reason why there is such a pushback for the support of a ceasefire is that it would hold Israel accountable. They would actually have to stop their bombing campaigns. And there would be verification, monitoring to ensure of that. Nobody wants to hold Israel accountable. So this is why most are opting for the humanitarian pause line as opposed to a ceasefire. But let me show you here this uh, great speech from Matthew Green in the House of Commons. The Honorable Member from Hamilton Center. UN agencies report over 10,000 Palestinian civilians have been killed and 1.5 million have been displaced by the Israeli siege and bombardment on Gaza since October 7th. UN experts say that these attacks constitute war crimes of collective punishment and ethnic cleansing. Shamefully, the Prime Minister directed his ambassador to abstain from a vote on an immediate ceasefire on Gaza on the UN General Assembly and yesterday Liberals and Conservatives voted against our motion calling for the same. So my question is, how many Palestinian deaths will be enough for the Prime Minister to find the moral courage to call for a ceasefire? Really good to see this. And I'm going to get to what has pushed the NDP to this point. Some of you may have watched a video I did a couple weeks ago on the Ontario NDP. They kicked out their only Palestinian member who uh, was calling out. Israel's apartheid and ongoing human rights abuses and was kicked out over that. It's important to separate the Ontario NDP, which I don't at this point think deserves your support, versus the federal NDP, which are listening to the voices of people and are now calling for uh, a ceasefire. So before I get to some more polling on where Canadians stand on this, including where Americans stand, as well as a recent clip from Trudeau, in case you missed it, and his accidental comments about a ceasefire... I got to show you where the numbers stand because it is very clear what is going on. This is the uh, the death toll. The latest violence has caused more than fourteen hundred deaths in Israel and at least eleven thousand uh, twenty five in Gaza as of November tenth. So, and th- th- but this is annual. So this is this has been going on for decades. This is not just about this past month, which of course is the worst we have seen. But it's about the ongoing oppression, the ongoing apartheid, the ongoing occupation, the blockade of Gaza, and the active human rights abuses that have been called out by major human rights organizations like Amnesty International, Israel-based Betzalem, uh, Human Rights Watch, the UN, have called these sorts of human rights abuses out for forever. And you're now just seeing the, the most extreme example of that. But Trudeau. In case you missed, I did a video on this, but I just want to remind you where Trudeau stands on this. Um, we need to see a cease. Uh, we need to see a, a humanitarian pause so we can flow. Uh, we need to see ceasing of, of, of the levels of violence that we're seeing. Um, we need to see civilians protected. We need to see a humanitarian pause. It's like ceasefire is a bad word. <laughs> he almost says ceasefire, but catches himself. Trudeau... This isn't a defense of him. This is actually a a criticism of him because he knows what the right thing to do is. But he cares more about 
his status among other world leaders in the U.S., Israel, Europe, the U.K., he'd rather stand with what they are doing as opposed to be his own leader. I mean, look, think back to Canada in the Iraq War. Canada was against the Iraq War. We were actually a leader back then. Yet here we are, once again, going along with everybody else. It's embarrassing. Here is the, this is the reason why the NDP, I mean, they should have already had this position, but you could say to their credit, they listened. So they did on the second demand that uh, Trudeau calls for a ceasefire. And this is because, as they write in their letter, over the past three weeks, more than 100,000 Canadians have written to us asking Canada to call for a ceasefire. So after the pressure they felt from this campaign, they decided the right thing to do, and of course, looking at the facts, they decided the right thing to do was call for a ceasefire. Now, again, it shouldn't have taken these letters, but this is why this sort of uh, outcry, the, this sort of work, whether it's you know out in the streets protesting, whether it's signing a letter, this kind of stuff does have an impact. Now, it's tougher to impact those in actual power. Of course, the NDP is the the third most popular party right now in Canada. Liberals hold the uh, uh, hold government, but regardless, this sort of pressure does work. And it's also worth mentioning the Bloc Quebecois have also joined the NDP in that call for an immediate ceasefire. Now, let's get to uh, some polling. Not that, I also want to emphasize, uh, emphasize here. P polling shouldn't, public polling shouldn't dictate where, what a government does. It, it should be, you know, one of the things they look at, but it shouldn't be the reason you support something. The reason to support a ceasefire is because it is the right thing to do. Looking at what is the most humane, humanitarian thing to do, calling for a ceasefire is the right thing to do. But when you have two thirds of Canadians also saying support a ceasefire, that is just overwhelming evidence with what you should be doing. So this is from Angus Reid Institute, and they uh, frame it in two different ways. So the red is a ceasefire should not be called at this time. See, that has not a lot of support except for the conservatives. And uh, the dark blue here, a full ceasefire should be called immediately. And the light blue, a temporary ceasefire should be called immediately to deliver humanitarian aid. So most voters support a ceasefire. Again, not the most important thing to note, but it is a data point worth mentioning. And the same thing with Americans. Most Americans agree, including a majority of Republicans, that there should be a ceasefire. So you can check that out here. 56% of even Republicans support a ceasefire. 66% overall, 80% Democrats, and 57% of uh, independents. Yet, here's the problem. Netanyahu, you can, I'll link to this below, you can read through this, but he uh, apparently, according to reports, rejected a ceasefire for hostages deal. The far right-wing Israeli government, which it's, it's important to note this, the government in Israel is far right-wing. Netanyahu is essentially the Trump of Israel. The far right-wing government cares more about taking Palestinian land than it does actually getting out their hostages. I mean, that is clear based on the indiscriminate bombing that could be hitting their own hostages, based on all we have, have been seeing, based on this uh, rejection of a ceasefire for hostages. It's, this is why it falls upon Israel's allies, like Canada, like the US, like the UK, like Europe, to put pressure on Israel to do the right thing. Without that pressure, without that, that threat of cutting off aid, there's not going to be any movement here. As long as Israel, as long as this far right-wing government is allowed to do what they want to do, they're going to keep doing it. The only thing that can stop them are their allies. And I want to end on these two things. So Amnesty International here, their open letter calling on Justin Trudeau uh, to push for an immediate ceasefire. And uh, if you want to put your name to something, this is Independent Jewish Voices, a Canadian group, also calling for a ceasefire, and you can sign this, and it goes to uh, Trudeau as well.